Hi, Alistair. Thank Hello. you for agreeing to be with us. And uh, just wanting to um, introduce Alistair Cole, who is the, the brother of our very own Ian Cole at the World Prayer Centre. So, Alistair, you've been an Elim minister for many years. Um, what are you doing now? Right. Well, I've been 40 years in pastoral ministry, uh, looking after churches. Uh, for 15 years of that, I was uh, head of the National Prayer Network of Elim Churches. I've now transitioned and moved to a wider teaching ministry, itinerant ministry, under the banner of the Watchman, which involves me traveling around churches, prayer conferences, prayer events, basically teaching on prayer-related issues, but not exclusively prayer. Um, so just as doors open up, uh, we're going through them. There have also been opportunities to do uh, a number of programs, Revelation TV and Christian Radio. So it's an exciting new dimension. It was launched about 12 months ago, and obviously it's in suspense at the moment. Um, but we're hoping in the days and weeks to come that uh, we can relaunch and uh, be back on the road visiting churches throughout the UK. That's great. So, um, Alistair, what do you think God is doing in this time of, of the coronavirus crisis? I, I think I, I've been thinking about this and I, I believe that there are two things that well, there's a lot of things that God is doing through this. But the two things that uh, spring to mind, as far as I'm concerned, I believe that God is speaking to the nations of the world. The prophet Haggai spoke of a time when God would shake the nations. And I believe that we're living in that time now. Um, there has been a lot of speculation uh, that this may be the beginning of what the Bible calls the Great Tribulation, the period leading up to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't believe that we're in that period, but I believe that this pandemic is a warning to the nations that that time is sometime in the future when the world will see the awesome judgment of God on an unparalleled scale. So I believe that this is a warning to the nations and it's a clear sign, a clear indication that we are living at that time. Uh, the Bible talks about the, the, the last days leading up to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's a very clear message that God is speaking to the nations but I believe also it's a very clear message that God is speaking to the church in that this is a time of massive preparation. Amazing doors of opportunity have opened in recent weeks. Uh, people who would never darken the door of a church are engaging, are hearing the gospel. There are literally thousands of people coming to faith in Christ and I believe that what God is saying to the church is it's pre preparation time for what may be a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit sometime in the future when people respond to the gospel and acknowledge Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but also a call to the church to get back to the task of preaching the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit. Also, tremendous levels of prayer. Um, are being entered into and, and I'm talking to uh, colleagues and leaders and, and Christians who are saying that through this period God has given them a, a greater love for the word of God and, and for devotion and reading the Bible and also a greater appreciation of corporate fellowship when you're cut off from it uh, people are beginning to appreciate the value of the gathered local church so I think it's those two things really Natasha so, so do you think we're beginning to see signs of revival in our nation and the nations? And if we are, how can we as Christians pray for that to happen? Yeah, yeah I, I think um, there is a, certainly a sign that God is moving. There are divided opinions as to whether we're on the cusp of a revival. And I think the, the, the question is, what exactly is revival? We need to define that. So, for example, if we were back in the 1960s with Billy Graham preaching to 120,000 people in Wembley and thousands coming to faith in Christ, many at that time said this is revival. Now, it wasn't. We thank God for it. But to me, revival is a supernatural flood tide of God's power 
that people outside the church realize that God is moving. I believe another definition could be that revival is an outbreaking of the awesome presence of God that begins in the hearts of God's people and in the church and flows out into the community. Now, I believe that what we are seeing may be that preparation period, may be the early birthing signs of uh, what God may be intending to do. The scripture talks about in the last days, God moving powerfully by his Holy Spirit. And I think with the great global prayer movement, we are seeing the early stages of what may be a global move of God around the nations of the world, including the UK, including Europe, where God is going to move in mighty power with many coming to faith in Christ and the church rediscovering that cutting edge of the gospel of the kingdom. So yes, I see seeds, I see birth, something being birthed in, in all of the amazing things that, that we are beginning to see through this difficult season through the church. So how, how can we pray at this time? Uh, yeah, I, well, you know, there are, there are many ways to pray. Uh, and and I, I, through this time, I've been uh, in my devotional studies reading through the great Old Testament prophets uh, because they ministered uh, at times uh, and in circumstances very similar to the days in which we're living. And one of the characters I've studied is the great prophet Elijah, who God called to warn the nation of Israel at a critical time in the history of that nation, the nation had turned against God with worshipping foreign gods, and God raised up Elijah to give a warning and to say, unless there is a turning back to God, then God's judgment would come. Now, that culminated in an incident when Elijah prayed on Mount Carmel, and he's praying, the context of his prayer is that God would renew the spiritual fortunes of the nation of Israel. But I believe there are principles in this prayer that can give us a template as to how we can pray for revival. So this is how Elijah prayed. He said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So he immediately focused on the greatness of God. He said, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, that I've done all these things at your word and that this people may know that you are the Lord God. Now, that awareness of the greatness of God and the Lordship of Christ will come as people reflect upon the message of the gospel. And then Elijah, having prayed that, that, uh, that God's presence would be manifest, he says, Lord, turn their hearts back to you again, that this people, that this nation may know that you are the Lord God. And at the end of that prayer, we read that God, the, the, the power of God's glory manifested itself and amazing things happened. So I believe that prayer recorded in 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 36 and 37, can be a template as to how we can pray for God to move in our nation and that once again there'll be an awareness of the greatness and the glory and power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's great. Thank you, Alistair, for taking okay. time out for us to interview you. And uh, yeah, lots of food for thought there. So, um, you know, hopefully people will go away and, um, and, and keep this in prayer. Thank Lovely you. Lovely to be very with you. Thank you.